What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas FX tutorial for you. Today we're going to be learning how to make yourself run like the Flash. And to show you an example of what we're going to be doing, here's a clip. Now if you want to do something like that, stick around and we'll learn how to do it inside Vegas FX. So first things first, you want to record your scene. Now in your scene, you want to have a shot of your subject running and then also a blank background of that shot. You can have multiple locations, but make sure you always have a blank background of where your subject is going to take off or land. So I'm going to drag both of those clips to my bin. And from there, I'm going to drag my first running shot onto the timeline. I'm going to trim this down to where I have a little bit of build up and then it's going to pan to her and then she's going to run and take off. I'm going to stop the frame right where she takes off and then I'm going to split the clip by pressing Control Shift and D on the keyboard. And then from here, I'm going to go forward on the timeline to where my wife is out of the frame and I'm going to trim the clip and put it back against the first clip. Then I'm going to shrink the end of it to where it's only about one second long. Then we're going to drag the second clip into the timeline and then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to start it after blank background one and then find the spot where I want my wife to appear into the shot and then hold Control Shift and D and split that clip. Once I've done that, I'm gonna trim the beginning of that shot to where it's about one second of the blank background on the second shot. Then I'm gonna hug the trimmed clip of her appearing onto that shot and it's gonna look like she just appears. To make things more organized, you can rename the tracks on your timeline. I'm gonna rename the short chunks to blank background one and two. And then from here, I'm gonna find the last frame that my wife is in the shot and I'm gonna take a screenshot of it. To do that, you go to options and go down to export frame. You can name it whatever you want, but we're going to do this twice. One for the first shot of her running and leaving, and the other one for her entering the scene. We're going to take a screenshot of that as well. I'm going to name that one Lisa too. Next, let's drag our screenshots into the media bin. And then we're going to drag our first screenshot onto the timeline above everything else. We're gonna trim it up to where it's only above the blank background, and then we're gonna make it about eight frames long, and I'm recording in 60 frames per second footage. We're gonna do the same thing with the second shot of her arriving into the scene. We're gonna place it over the blank background and make it about eight frames long. Next, we need to take a screenshot of our subject so we can mask them out so we can make the running effect. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your first picture is selected, and then we're gonna go select the pen tool because we're gonna to have to mask out our subject. You can create a rough mask of your subject because it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be moving very quickly. Once you've masked out your subject, go down to the transform properties and select position and we're going to add a keyframe at the beginning of this picture. Then we're going to go to the end of the picture and move it to the right and that's going to create another keyframe of where our subject's going to end. Once you've done that, make sure your keyframe is at the end of your picture and let's see what it looks like. Now, of course, this doesn't look good because it's just a masked out shot. So we're going to add some motion blur by selecting this little motion blur icon on the timeline next to your picture. That's going to make it look tons better by itself, like she's running really fast and you see a little bit of motion trail. We're going to do the same thing with the second picture. We're going to mask out our subject again. We're going to move her to the right. You may also need to change the scale depending on how your subject is entering the scene. Once you've keyframed your subject into place, it should look pretty good. Then you add the motion blur and it looks like she's running really fast into the scene. Next, we're going to duplicate this mask four to five times to create a motion trail so we can make the running look a little more like the show. All we want to do is take our first picture and then duplicate it a few times. You can do this four to five times depending on how you want it to look and how long you want your motion trails to be. And then for each duplicate, move it one frame ahead of the last one and that'll create the motion trails. Now I want to make her look a little bit more like the flash, so I'm going to give her a little bit of a red and yellow and white glow. So to do that, go up to your effects tab, type in glow, and just drag and drop that onto your first picture. You'll want to mess with the intensity and the threshold until you get something you like. I kind of like this right here. Next, we want to copy and paste this motion frame under our other keyframed screenshots because we want them all to have the glow effect. But we want to kind of make her ease into the glow. So for the very first shot, I want to change the intensity to one and then increase the intensity one number for however many screenshots you have. For mine, it's going to go all the way up to five. And if you're happy with it, let's move on to the second part. And we're going to be doing the same thing with the arrival. We'll copy and paste the glow effect onto the second screenshot and then duplicate the screenshot four to five times. But for each duplicate, we're going to move it back one frame. So starting from the top screenshot, we're going to keep that intensity at five and then drop the intensity one number for each screenshot all the way till you're out of screenshots. 
And once you're done with that, it'll look something like this. Next, we're gonna create some lightning. Now this lightning is gonna be following our person. You can create a bunch of extra lightning if you want, maybe like crawling up their arm or in their eye, kind of like they have in the show. But just for this purpose, I'm gonna show you how to create the lightning following the person in a trail. To do this, we're gonna click on new layer and create a grade layer. This layer will allow us to add effects to it without having to add effects to any other specific layer. Let's go up to the effects and search for lightning. And then we're gonna see lightning and electricity. And we're gonna drag that down to our grade layer. You can rename this if you want. I'm gonna rename it to bolt one. And then we're gonna drop down the effects menu, go to start, and we're gonna change the starting position to the right. We're just gonna move it to the right. And then we're gonna move the ending position a little bit more to the left, kind of where she starts running. You can adjust the wave scale and twitch scale to make it look how you want it. And then once you're satisfied with it, let's change the color. You can change the core color. I'm gonna move it to yellow. And then I'm gonna change the glow color to red to give it more of a flash look. Now what we're gonna do is make the lightning start only once she's past that lightning. Now we can hit Control, Shift, and D and split the lightning grade so it only starts right when she takes off. I want the lightning to trail behind her a little bit after she's off screen too to give it a little more of the show feel. And then we're gonna Control, Shift, and D and split the clip there. Now to make the lightning follow her, if we drop down to the effects tab and go to the growth, you can adjust the growth from zero to one and that's gonna adjust the length of the lightning. So let's add a keyframe on growth at the beginning of our clip and then move it a little bit forward in time and we'll adjust the growth a little bit and then move it a little bit further and once she's out of a frame, adjust the growth all the way. And once she's out of frame, that's when we wanna make the lightning go away. So go down to your end point and put a keyframe on growth on the same spot as your last keyframe on the start growth and then we're gonna drag it to the end of the lightning and then change the growth amount to zero. And that's gonna make the lightning disappear. So if we play it back, the lightning starts behind her and then disappears after her. Next, we can duplicate that as many times as we want, but we gotta make sure we go down to effects and go to the start and adjust the Y keyframe. I'm gonna move it up about 200 pixels and then go to your end keyframe and then raise your Y value 200 pixels there as well. So now we have lightning on top of each other, but we don't want it to look identical. So if we go up to our seed, we can change that to something random. That'll make the lightning look different. Once you're satisfied with that, duplicate it again as many times as you want. Change the Y value of the start and the end and also change the seed. And then you'll have successfully created lightning following her. You can fine tune this if you want because you obviously want to make it look as good as you can, but I'm happy with how this looks right now. Next, let's duplicate the last lightning and move it over to our landing spot. You'll also want to go to your first frame of growth and reduce that to zero so you can see the lightning. From here, we're actually going to have to flip the start and the end points. So it's actually coming into the right. And then you can make adjustments on where you want the lightning to start and end. So once you're happy with the position of it, if you put your growth back to 100 and then play it, it could line up perfectly like this to where the lightning starts and ends right when she finishes running. If you're happy with it, go ahead and duplicate it again and then adjust the Y pixels of the start and end point to move it down or up. Duplicate that as many times as you want to create as many lightning bolts as you want. I'm happy with three on this shot and it looks something like this. And now you have lightning following your subject. You can create a bunch of little extra lightning again on your own. It's a little bit time consuming, but it really does sell the effect. Next, if you wanna add a flash of light for when she takes off and comes into the scene, kinda of like it does in the show, we can do that by adding another grade layer. We can trim the clip and then shrink it to our desired length. I'm gonna make mine about four frames long. And then we can go up to our effects and add the same glow effect onto our brightness grade. Once you've done that, adjust the intensity and threshold to where it's kind of engulfing the scene. If you're satisfied with it, go ahead and put keyframes for your intensity and threshold and then move to the end of your scene and adjust the values to where you're happy with it. Mine's gonna start off intense and then fade into the regular shot. If you're happy with it, duplicate it and bring it over to your first shot where she takes off and it'll look something like this. Let's see how the entire scene looks. And that's it. You've made your subject run like the flash. You can grade this a little bit more in Vegas effects, or you can load up Vegas pro and grade it that way as well. Make it look a little more cinematic, give it some vignetting, maybe a little bit of color correction. And there you go. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to shoot a like down there and maybe even shoot a subscribe down there as well. Cause I have a lot more Vegas effects and Vegas pro tutorials on my channel, scrapyard films right there. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see y'all in the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.